I officially want to welcome you to the State of the City for the City of Norwalk. And it is my pleasure to gather all together today in person. Thank you for being here. Give yourself a round of applause. Today, we will take a look at some of our recent accomplishments, as well as really providing an update on not only what's going on, but some of the projects that are amid in, in ensuring high quality of life here in the city of Norwalk. And I am thrilled to be able to connect in person with you all today. Despite the challenges posed by COVID-19, the city really did continue to offer exceptional services to our community. We have clean and safe streets that assist our residents from getting to and from work and school. We opened several new businesses that offer, that offer new shopping experiences and new dining options for our residents and business community. And we saw the need in our community to begin virtual community meetings and neighborhood watch meetings to connect with our residents, to hear from them on their concerns and really allow that open line of communication. And we modified, changed, remodified, changed three more times our recreation services and the programming that so many of our families truly needed and needed that experience. And we did not want to stop, nor did we. So let's officially get started. For those of you that don't know me, I am Mayor Jennifer Perez, and I again welcome you all to the State of the City of Norwalk. Today's invocation will be given by Father Aramis, who serves as the pastor of St. Linus Church. Gracious and loving God, creator of all things, whose steadfast love is everything, all authority comes from you. We come before you, this assembly, with a humble knowledge that we are servants to all who live around us. Bless us, dear Lord, with your guiding presence. Bless with your grace our elected city officials. Guide them with your wisdom that they may lead and serve well our city. Help us this day, O God, to remember especially those whose voices are often muted in our society, those who are terribly affected and afflicted by this coronavirus those who lost their loved ones during this pandemic, those who struggle trying to make ends meet, those who through no fault of their own are judged as less deserving of our considerations. Never let us forget that their voices too are just as important as ours. Help us to have the humility to listen, the grace to speak carefully and kindly, and the knowledge to recognize that we work for the common good, striving to make our place in which all are welcome, in which all are kept safe, in which our vision is dedicated to the promotion of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Remind us, dear God, that the citizens of this city of varied backgrounds, genders, ethnicities, and nationalities always carry with them the willingness to help, to serve when we must, and respect all as people created in your image. Help us to remember that the conviction of our beliefs does not mean that those who dis disagree with us are our enemies, but our friends and allies. Help us never to forget that your call for love and justice applies to every resident of this city. Dearest God, give us your light in the midst of obscurity of our times, the courage and the strength to face every challenge, that we will see your way and carry out your will. We ask this in your most holy name, you who created us 
in your image and likeness and who stain, sustain and empowers us the people to be people of light and love. Amen. Have the moment of prayer in our hearts and our minds. I ask that you please continue to think and pray for two City of Norwalk family members that we lost this week. One was a Norwalk Sheriff, LA County Sheriff's Deputy, Andrew Mayers, who's been with the deputy, who's been a deputy here in the Norwalk Station for many, many years. And we just recently lost Mr. Chambers Smith, who is a transportation employee, one of the best here in the city of Norwalk. And please keep them and, your fa and their family members in your prayers these next couple days. Now, not many cities have the honor to say this, but our supervisor, Ms. Janice Hahn, is here to lead us proudly in the Pledge of Allegiance. If we can please give a round of applause for Ms. Janice Hahn. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to recognize my colleagues from the city of Norwalk. Please welcome Norwalk City Council members, Mr. Rick Ramirez. Rick. And Councilwoman Margarita Rios. Margarita. Please also welcome our city manager, Mr. Jesus Gomez. Jesus. And our deputy city manager, Mr. Richard Rojas. We are very fortunate in the city of Norwalk to have a strong family of elected officials. And it is my honor to welcome former mayors of the city of Norwalk. First, Mr. Bob Arthur, former mayor of the city of Norwalk and city of Cerritos College Board of Trustees member. We also have with us today former mayor Marcel Rodarte, who is also currently serving as the executive director of California Contract Cities. Marcel, thank you for being here. And also Mr. Gordon Steffenhagen, who also serves as our president for the Norwalk Community Coordinating Council. And I'd also like to welcome the family of former mayor, Mr. Luigi Vernola. Lisa? Here from the Norwalk La Mirada Unified School District, we have Karen Morrison, president of the board. Ms. Norma Amesqua, board vice president. And board members, Narcisse Braspo, Dr. Rob Cancio, Jorge Torado, Jose Rios, and Chris Staples. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. And we also have our Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, Estrado Centinlian. Thank you. And let's give a huge shout out to Norwalk La Mirada Board. They are all here present today. You get the award for sure. From Little Lake School District, we have Board Clerk, Janet Rock. And we have board members, Manuel Cantu and Ms. Gina Ramirez. Thank you. We also have Superintendent Dr. Bill Kareen. Thank you, Dr. Kareen. And from the Whittier Union High School District, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, Kevin Jamaro. From the Norwalk Sheriff Station, please welcome Captain Jim Tatro and Lieutenant Noe Garcia. And from LA County Fire, we have the Assistant Fire Chief, Mr. Jim, Chief William Mayfield. And a very surprised guest today, Battalion Chief, Mr. Jose Gomez, brother of our city manager. And our dear friend from the fire department, community services liaison, LaFonda Riggins. And from Assemblywoman Lisa Caldron's office, we have Alberto Rios and Ruby Duanes. 
Alberto and Rudy, thank you. How fortunate are we in the city of Norwalk to have the backing and the support of all our elected officials. Our support from our fire department and our sheriff's department, our school districts, and from our residents and our businesses. If you are a member of the Norwalk Chamber of Commerce, please stand so we can recognize you. And also, if you are a Norwalk commissioner, please stand and be recognized. You do so much for our city. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our program today will begin with an update of our business community by Ms. Karen Spilsbury, Executive Director of the Norwalk Chamber of Commerce. It wasn't that long ago that I was able to stand here and talk about some of the challenges that have been put on our business community, and so I'm happy to be here again today just to continue that discussion. As we all know, COVID-19 is not over. The pandemic is still with us, and businesses still continue to struggle. But through that process, we as the Chamber of Commerce here in this local community are doing everything we can to help support our businesses, to help bring business to Norwalk, to help our businesses increase their sales, and to do what we can to bring people together. I get so many phone calls from people asking for a business referral or wanting to connect with a specific industry and it makes me so happy when I'm able to do that and to connect people. And that's one of the biggest things that the chamber does. So right here is what we see from our Western Association of Chamber Executives who did a branding process and came up with what they called the three C's of Chambers of Commerce. And what they are is to be a catalyst for business growth, a convener of leaders and influencers who make things happen, and a champion for a stronger community. And while we've had 20 months worth of shutdowns and mask mandates and more shutdowns and more mask mandates that, you know, we still have some for sale if you need any. Five dollars. It's a fire sale. We have been doing our best to be that catalyst by providing the business support, information, and more through our partnerships with the city of Norwalk with our partners at the Small Business Development Center and the SBA. We've been a convener of community and support groups, business leaders. We use technology to bring people together the best we can. Our participation in the Gateway Chambers Alliance is a group of 13 local chambers of commerce who are the voice for good business laws. And we work together monthly to try to make our voice heard in Sacramento. I know many of our city leaders also do that same thing. So. We're on the same page with that, trying to make sure that when you're in Sacramento, you're representing the people that live in your community. You're representing the businesses that are in your community, and you're doing the best you can to be their voice. We champion our community by promoting our businesses through a variety of ways, through our website, through social media, our newspaper, through email blast. We provide our shop local, support local, stay local voice to social media all the time. It's so important to remember that. And it's even more important for me to remember how to do this. <laughs> I always forget. I think I turned it on. There we go. So with those challenges that began when the pandemic started a year ago, March, there's been a lot of research done. There are a lot of organizations that have reached out to businesses and asked them what's going on. And some of the more important points to remember are on this slide. Small business trends over this last year have been trending unfortunately, not in the right direction. And Gradient Financial did a survey of small businesses to see how many of them thought they were gonna make it through the pandemic. And only 78% of those small businesses felt strongly that they would make it through the pandemic. That's 22% that we're gonna lose, potentially. So that's big. CNBC ranked all the states in a variety of ways that you can see up here. California is number 33 out of 50. And while we're number one for access to capital, we are number 47 for the actual cost of doing business in our state. Think about how that translates to your local small business. It's huge. And the business owners that are here today, you know this. You've experienced it and you've dealt with it. So you understand this. 
One thing that has really become big is what's called the shadow economy. Now, we want to support everybody. We want people to be able to make a living. We want them to be able to feed their families. But unfortunately, when you're buying flowers from somebody at the freeway entrance, you're supporting a shadow economy. And that's an economy that doesn't necessarily contribute to the overall health of the community. The health of the community depends on a number of items. One of them are sales taxes. When you're buying flowers at a freeway off ramp, you're not going to pay sales taxes. So that doesn't help the community. And unfortunately, we want, to, we want to bring them in with the rest of the community, but a lot of them still struggle. A lot of them don't have the ability to open a storefront. A lot of them don't have the ability to get a business license. So how can we help them? That's something that we all need to be thinking about. Because we want those businesses to be a part of the community. We want them to be able to interact in a positive way with our residents, with our businesses that are already here, and with our, all of our business community. Now let's talk about challenges to recovery. Number one, supply chain. How many of you have been listening to the news and you hear those words supply chain? I'm sure you all have, because supply chain has to do with all those big container ships that are sitting out in the ocean. I believe the last count was 111, and they're just sitting there, unfortunately, with goods and services on them that can't get into the ports, that can't get to the trucks, that can't get delivered to your stores, to your restaurants. And that's a huge issue. That creates a problem for your cost of goods. If you've been watching your grocery store receipts, I know you know that you're paying more. I know you see that shelves are empty, and that's all to do with supply chain. Lack of workers, especially in the hospitality and the restaurant industry. It's not that people don't want to work, but there's a lot of reasons why there's a lack of workers. And finding out what those reasons are, I think, is very important to be able to help the businesses regain workers so that they can be fully open as we move forward. Chips, not lace. <laughs> Computer chips, car chips. We spent some time with Norwalk Auto Auction a few weeks ago visiting his business, and one of the things he shared with us is he was selling his own used car at the auction because he's got no used cars coming in because people are not selling their used cars and buying new cars. If you want to get a new computer, our chamber has been on the verge of buying new computers for a year and a half now, but we can't because the, the supplies are just not there because of a chip shortage. That is huge. Anti-business legislation, as I said earlier, part of our Gateway Chambers Alliance is to work with our local elected officials that represent us in Sacramento to put good business legislation through. And unfortunately, so many of the laws hinder our businesses, maybe not in the best way. So how do we change that? And inflation. I'm sure you've all heard about inflation. Things may go up. Interest rates may go up. Cost of goods may go up. Inflation has a big impact on all of us. But let's look at some positives. Innovations. There are so many innovations that have come out of this pandemic. How many of you are now considered Zoom experts? <laughs> Microsoft Teams experts, right? All of us, all of us are becoming experts in the use of those technologies. And there's some great innovations that have come out. Infrastructure reform, we're waiting. We're all patiently waiting for Washington, D.C to approve some kind of infrastructure reform. There are two bills pending in DC. The one we'd like to see passed is the less money one because that does not increase business taxes. So we're looking and supporting that one and we think you should all reach out to your elected officials to do the same. American Rescue Plan, hallelujah. Our cities, our school districts, our many local entities have been blessed to have received funds through this plan. And you see pictures all the time of them taking those funds and presenting them to their constituents. That is so important. And we're looking forward to seeing what the city of Norwalk is going to be bringing forward through their American Rescue Plan dollars. So we're very excited about that. Financial support. Again, there have been so many grants and loans and IDLE and PPP and city has put out their own grant to local businesses, which have helped very many of them keep their doors open. So that's a positive. Unfortunately, a negative comes with that because there's a bill and it's gonna be paid eventually by a lot of our kids. But 
from right now, it's been so helpful to keep businesses open. Increased local sales is positive. We've seen an uptick in sales dollars, sales tax dollars coming into the city, which means people are buying more. So they're still buying, they're still spending. And new businesses are forming. While not on the scale that we once saw, they're still forming. So there are still people out there looking to open a business, grow a business, start a business, and be a part of the business community. Now, here's something interesting. Spent an hour the other day driving around Norwalk, and this is what I saw. This is only a very small piece. I went to two areas. Imagine the rest of the community and the signs that you're going to see there. We are hiring. Why are we hiring? Because we want to open. We want to grow our businesses. We want to give people an opportunity to have a job. But unfortunately, there's a lot of reasons why people aren't going back to work. Some of them had to do with the financial support that people got through unemployment and through federal unemployment. But that's now done. And people are still not going back to work. Yesterday, Norwalk Best Western Inn manager shared with me that he did some research. And he feels that one of the main reasons we're not getting workers back is baby boomers who have retired and are not going to come back to work again because of the pandemic. And even more unfortunately, the number of people who, has, who have lost their lives to COVID. The biggest chunk of those were in the workforce age, 30 to 55. So that's a huge number of workers that just aren't here anymore. It's not all doom and gloom. There are a lot of bright things that are happening in our world. And we want to continue to move those forward. We ask you to continue to shop local, support local, and stay local. Because when you do that, you help build a better, stronger community. And that is what we all need for our residents and for our businesses. We want to thank the city and Mayor Jennifer Perez for the opportunity to speak here for a few minutes today. And we want to invite you. Come out on November 3rd at 9 a.m. in the morning to Chick-fil-A for coffee and conversation. He's providing the coffee. You provide the conversation. And we look forward to seeing you as we continue to reopen. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And just to give a little update on some of the information that Karen had shared, this past week at our council meeting, uh, my colleagues and I just approved a special event permit that would allow some of those new businesses and some of those new pop-up events and, and businesses and families that are starting the new process to obtain special business license to try it out and see how it's going to fit here in the city of Norwalk. So I'd like to thank my colleagues for that and congratulate our team for really putting forth something different and something innovative for our businesses and those that are, that are pushing for their family members. Thank you again, Karen. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Captain James Tatro from the Norwalk Sheriff's Department to give us an update. Captain Tatro. Well, good afternoon. Um, it is my pleasure to be here again today for the state of the city. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple areas uh, and keep it very brief. I'm going to start with traffic. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we increased tra traffic enforcement in the city of Norwalk this past year with the help of uh, the city council. And it's a very important aspect of public safety sometimes gets overlooked. And I can tell you that it is a fact that if the traffic enforcers are not enforcing the traffic laws, uh, many people will be people and, and bend those rules a little bit and it gets a little unsafer to walk around and drive around in the city. And we changed that this year and added some personnel to enforce those laws. Uh, one of the uh, bigger additions is a motorcycle sergeant. And as you can see on this slide, Citations have increased. No one likes to get a citation, but it's good to have the reminder. And if you know that we're enforcing the laws, people slow down and stop when they're supposed to and, and are courteous to one another. Because really, when it comes down to it, uh, traffic laws are a selfish thing when you break them, right? You're just being selfish. So uh, we've done that. And we've done a great job at that. And you can see that we're going in the right direction. And it's just safer to be out and about in the city. This one I say for last because this is an important uh, summary of what's going on in Norwalk with the support of the city council. 
Janice Hahn and her office. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, this city is the safest it's been in a long time. And I will tell you, where did that slide go? There, there it is. So in 2019, we, we had a 35 plus year crime low in the city of Norwalk. 2020, it ticked up a little bit because quite honestly, it couldn't go much lower, I didn't think, right? And a lot of people were home in 2020. Uh, but you can see in 2021 where we are. We are trending lower, and that's not just this month, that's this entire year. In the county of LA, if you've been paying attention to crime, uh, crime is up throughout the county. In the LA County Sheriff's Department, we have 26 patrol stations. Only four stations have seen a reduction in crime, and no one has seen a bigger reduction than Norwalk Station. Yeah. Overall, crime in Norwalk is down 12%, whereas throughout the county, it's up 3%, and different categories are up even more than that. And I'd like to say that I give a lot of credit to Lieutenant Noe Garcia, who runs the special assignment team here in Norwalk that focuses on not only crime, but quality of life issues for the residents and business owners. And we strategize often about what needs attention, and we focus on those areas, and it's proven successful. And I, I really appreciate you, Noe. And it's only going to get better. So thank you, and thank you for your partnership. We've seen a better uh, engagement between business owners and us, and the community and us. So thank you for that, because it does take all of us. Appreciate it. So here in the city of Norwalk, we have done a lot to build our relationship with the Sheriff's Department and the station here in the city of Norwalk. And I think one of the things that makes it even better is when Lieutenant Garcia was being recognized for that recognition and the efforts that he puts forth. If you look at him, he's shaking his head. It's his job. It's his team, and Norwalk is his family, just like Captain Tatro. And for that, we in the city of Norwalk are, are truly grateful because you have, uh, you've embraced the city of Norwalk. You've set a goal to make it a better and safer place within partnership with our public safety department, and the numbers prove. So let's give a round of applause again to our sheriff's department. So I'm going to try to get through this, give you some fun videos to watch because you don't want to stand here and look at me talk for another 20 minutes. So we're going to get through this together with some, what I hope is some good updates in, in what you're going to hear here in the city of Norwalk. Undoubtedly, it was a challenging year. Nobody can say it wasn't. We all know in some form or fashion, everybody experienced some challenges. In reality, the city of Norwalk continued to make progress in many fronts, from homelessness to economic development. Friends, please join me in just watching our first video. The City of Norwalk remains steadfast in its commitment to ensuring a high quality of life for those who call this city home. This past year, amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we doubled up our efforts to ensure the health and safety of the community, while continuing to offer exceptional services and programs. When the pandemic restricted social gatherings, our dedicated social services team promptly pivoted and hosted innovative programs like Parking Lot Loteria, drive-through birthday celebrations, and virtual art and cooking demos. These programs kept residents active, engaged, and most importantly, helped to lift their spirits. The Recreation and Park Services Department reformatted many of their programs to go virtual as well, including Creative Little Tots and Rexercise. Once the city resumed in-person events in July, Recreation hosted the summer concerts and resumed programming at the Norwalk Arts and Sports Complex. 
Likewise, the Public Safety Department continued its outreach efforts and developed a virtual platform to conduct neighborhood watch meetings for residents to participate. The community forums also went virtual, ensuring that City Council continued to connect with residents on issues of concern. The City also enhanced the online payment system, providing residents and businesses an opportunity to pay their utility bills, animal licenses, and permits quickly and safely from their home or business. The challenges of the past year helped illustrate why Norwalk is regarded as a connected community. City staff reached out to residents in need, ensuring housing and nutritional needs were met. Neighbors looked out for one another, and the business community rallied together to weather the tough times. The Norwalk community moves forward, stronger than ever. A lot was happening, and that was just a small tidbit, and we're gonna show you some more. Really securing the safety and security of residents is the foundation of a healthy and thriving community. That's what we all want. We want our families to be safe. We want our parents and our loved ones, our children, our schools, our businesses. Safety is number one. And a thriving community is one that we all want together. So let's take a closer look at our efforts to improve the quality of life. The Norwalk City Council is committed to ensuring the safety of all residents and focused heavily in 2021 on increasing public safety. Council took public safety into consideration by unanimously approving the fiscal year 2021-2022 budget, which included a 15% increase for the public safety and social services departments. The public safety department has had a busy year so far. Public safety officers responded to approximately 30 crime scenes to provide latent fingerprinting services, assisted in recovering 81 reported stolen vehicles, and aided the Norwalk Sheriff's Department with 285 traffic collision incidents. Overall, they have responded to around 10,815 calls for service. Earlier this year, the City Council approved additional services to increase public safety. Some of these services include the addition of a third LASD motorcycle traffic enforcement officer, a second HOPE team to ensure the city has dedicated homeless engagement seven days a week, four additional Norwalk Enforcement Team officers and a sergeant. Additionally, Public Safety Administrative staff initiated an education effort to deter illegal dumping activity. Around 220 letters were mailed out to residents and or property owners to inform them about bulky item pickup and trash collection services provided by Athens Services. Looking to the future, a parking study to evaluate the current and future state of parking in the city was initiated, which included input from the community and presented to Council in October. Furthermore, the Public Safety Department developed the city's first ever local hazard mitigation plan that will identify the hazards that pose a threat to Norwalk, create actions to help mitigate the impact of those hazards, and qualify the city for FEMA pre- and post-disaster grant funding. The Public Safety Department continues to be a model for cities and law enforcement agencies throughout the country. The City of Norwalk will continue to meet the needs of residents by providing high-quality service and innovative programming. I'd like to take this opportunity to really thank the entire Public Safety Department, as well as our Interim Director, Mr. Dennis Cato for really putting their commitment to safety here in the city of Norwalk for our residents, our children, and our businesses. Public safety is actively staffed the Emergency Operations Center, what we call it is the EOC, some of you might have similar in your businesses, for the entirety of the pandemic. And these efforts include implementing health protocols, participating in public health briefings on a regular day, daily, multi-times-a-day basis, and really conducting public outreach campaigns and hosting vaccine clinics. As public safety remains the top priority, we will continually assess our efforts 
Ensure that we are building successes and identify areas of improvement and plan for the future. And Lieutenant Wozniak, are you in the room still? Lieutenant Wozniak is one of our heads of the EOC. Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Lieutenant Wozniak also um, spearheaded our great shakeout yesterday. So I know some of our schools participated in a great shakeout. That is one of the things that we can never be more prepared for is an earthquake. We live here in, this, in California, it's beautiful weather, but the one thing that we really cannot you know, get our handle on is when is that next big one coming? So Eric, thank you for all you do and the information that you share with our city and our team, our city family members, residents and businesses, and, and really assisting us in being prepared. I really appreciate that. Next, we're gonna look at our infrastructure and steps that we have taken to ensure safe roads, reliable access to water and other resources, and clean and an attractive neighborhoods. This past year, we really did embark on several major projects, and it's my pleasure now to show them to you with this video. The City of Norwalk has continued its commitment to improving our infrastructure. This is an essential part of enhancing the daily lives of residents and supporting the local economy. The Public Services Department has been hard at work this year, as they are every year, with several projects to improve the city's infrastructure. From water and sewer to traffic and road repairs, every single one of these projects will improve the quality of life in Norwalk. A risk and resiliency assessment was completed and certified to comply with the American Water Infrastructure Act. This will help the Public Services Department to determine the improvements and or repairs needed to be made to ensure that our drinking water continues to be safe for our residents. Moreover, the improvements to water well number 10 were completed to ensure that the well remains safe and operational during a power outage. Looking ahead, separate master plans are being prepared for the city's sewer, water, and storm drain systems so that the city can better plan out future projects. The city diligently seeks out funding sources for projects. This year, it was awarded $20 million in funding for the Hermosillo Park Stormwater Infiltration Project through the Los Angeles County Flood Control District Safe Clean Water Program. The city was also awarded an Environmental Enhancement and Mitigation Program grant for over $275,000 through the California Natural Resources Agency to rehabilitate seven medians on Firestone Boulevard, Imperial Highway, and Rosecrans Avenue. Speaking of medians, the entry and exit ramp onto the Shoemaker Bridge over the I-5 freeway is currently receiving traffic median improvements, which are expected to be completed by the end of the year. Moving over to roads, the concrete improvements in zones 24, 27, and 32 have been completed. The concrete improvements included repairing and or adding ADA compliant accessibility ramps, adjustments to sidewalks, and improvements to unpaved alleys, among other projects. The paving improvements in zones 24 and 32 will complete by the end of this calendar year. Additionally, the city currently has three traffic signal improvement projects, just under $6 million, under construction that when completed, will provide for improved vehicle movement through the city and improved safety for pedestrians. These projects are scheduled to complete in spring of 2022. There are more infrastructure projects planned and, as always, the city will continue to explore opportunities to invest in quality infrastructure for Norwalk residents. Maintaining infrastructure citywide is a priority, just like public safety. It's the goal of our Public Services Department to design, build, and maintain the public right-of-ways and city facilities here in the city of Norwalk. They want to make sure that they are clean, accessible, ADA compliant, and meet the needs of our diverse community. Our Public Services and Engineering staff, they work hard every single day, whether they're out in the community or inside in their offices. They're reviewing plans, looking for new opportunities and grant funding. They're working with contractors and completing a variety of maintenance repairs every single day. And just a few stat statistics for you all. 
In 2021, we continued our urban forestry efforts resulting in the cities being designated as the Tree City USA for the seventh year in a row. We replaced 135 damaged or missing signs in the city. We painted 5,896 square feet of crosswalks. We painted 2,523 square feet of traffic legends. And we continue daily to address the sources of life within our community, including dumped items, overgrown weeds, and mess everywhere, and the graffiti. We work every day to find it. But what we have found is that we, as a city team, cannot see everything. So we rely on our residents and our businesses to call and let us know what you see so that we can get it taken care of. So that's one of my asks of you today. If you see something that needs to be cleared, cleaned, or fixed, give us a call. I never thought that infrastructure, streets, asphalt, green grass, new you know, park structures, I never thought that I would ever stand at a podium and say that that's exciting. The amount of asphalt that we laid this year and plan to lay next year, that gets me excited. I'll talk to you, what, I want diamonds and all that other stuff later, but <laughs> asphalt, crosswalks, ADA compliant sidewalks, those things driving around and seeing them clean and clear and accessible, that's exciting. And we're only going to do more. So finally, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on to economic development. And as most of you know, in 2018, we adopted our economic development plan. And we've been working diligently to accomplish those things in that plan and the various areas. We continue to work towards diversifying and growing our local economy. And guess what? We have a video to show you. Let's take a look. The city of Norwalk is committed to planning for the economic prosperity of our community. The Community Development Department continues to implement the strategies in our Economic Development Opportunities Plan, which was adopted in 2018. Our staff members are actively working on a dozen projects that will produce more than $700 million of new development investment in the city. This development will occur in the form of new mixed-use residential, new businesses, and new public destinations for the community to enjoy. In support of the community development's execution of this plan, our planning division has been extremely busy even throughout this pandemic. Planning staff assists the public on a daily basis in person as well as over the phone and via email. And since reopening to the public in July, over 300 people have been assisted at the planning counter in person. As well as keeping busy at the counter, the planning division has reviewed and processed 14 new development projects. Some examples of these projects include the adoption of the Heart of Norwalk Vision Plan, review and approval of a new drive through Chipotle Lane at Chipotle, and the construction of an almost 5,000 square foot Chick-fil-A fast food restaurant with the drive through lane that accommodates over 50 vehicles. In addition to supporting our businesses, community development also has been supporting our residents throughout this pandemic. Our Housing Authority staff conducted eligibility interviews from our Section 8 and Soroptimus Village waiting lists and provided housing assistance to over 600 households for monthly rent. In keeping with the City's commitment to help its residents in need, the Housing Authority was able to assist 75 households in a time of critical need through the Homeless Prevention and Rapid Rehousing Program. Two other important programs that help low-income households are the CDBG and HOME programs. These programs have helped rehabilitate 17 homes in the city by providing over $300,000 in grants and loans. During the pandemic, over 60 businesses were provided with more than half a million dollars total in assistance through our business loan program. 
In addition to helping our local businesses, the city's also been able to support almost 20 households with almost $100,000 in rental, mortgage, and utilities assistance to further support them through our emergency rental assistance program. As always, Norwalk continues to look for ways to improve our city that will ensure a thriving future for those who live, work, and play here. As you've seen, we've been busy in the city of Norwalk. We're working every single day to make Norwalk a retail and dining destination, as well as a community that first time home buyers will be proud to call home. As part of our efforts to market strategic areas, we launched an economic development web portal as a digital marketplace tool where we can engage new developers and build interest in underutilized sites. They don't need to come to City Hall and talk to John anymore in person. We want that, that ability to log on to a portal, see where the need is, where we can assist and drive that ability. This past year, we supported small businesses and families, as you saw, in the need by securing grants and providing assistance and will continue to do so as we go in to the next year. I really hope that you found today's program interesting a little, informative a lot, um, and I want you to know that we're going to continue to share these updates with you as our residents and business owners through many, many fashions. We can never communicate enough. We will continue to share projects through available platforms such as our monthly community newsletter, The Norwalk Now, our social media pages, our community forums. And speaking of community forums, we have a great room here today of people we will be having our first in-person community forum on Thursday, November 4th at 6 p.m. at the Norwalk Senior Center. This will be our first in-person, like I had mentioned, but we're also gonna continue to give that ability to those that can't leave and watch it virtually, just as you would do our council meetings. I wanna also thank Athens Services for sponsoring our compost bins that you're gonna to receive today. So on your tables, we, we wanted to find something ex you know, exciting for your giveaway. And what better thing is exciting other than trash? <laughs> All right, before we close today, I'd really like to encourage those present and those that are watching on Zoom to really get involved in our community of Norwalk. Within the last two months, we coordinated through Caltrans and our public safety department. In the past two months with public safety and Caltrans, we coordinated cleanup efforts here in the city of Norwalk at the southbound 605 exit at Rosecrans and also on Front Street. And we had between 30 to 50 volunteers coming out to help and wanting to put forth community here in the city of Norwalk and we will continue to plan those events so please look out for those invites and as we head into the holiday season there is truly no better way to think about others than think of those here in the city of Norwalk the state of the city event has always been a fundraiser and today is no different so simply by joining us today you've contributed to our food pantry at the social services department and our teen alliance program to go for scholarships for our seniors. And I'd like to mention a few other ways I'd really like you to think about giving to the city of Norwalk in the next few months. Come out to City Hall Lawn tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m we are joining with the cities of Bellflower and Paramount for our annual Relay for Life and doing all that we can to fight cancer, support those that are fighting it now, and remembering those that we have lost. You can donate food items to our social services food pantry for distribution to our local families in need. And you can also donate personal hygiene items 
That too goes to our social services department to assist our homeless here in the city of Norwalk. You can also brighten the day of a young child here in the city through our angel tree program. Pick up a tag at any of our city facilities, buy a clothing item and a toy, and we will deliver them for you. And you will put a smile on a child's face here in the city of Norwalk. And almost daily, a moment does not go by that I do not look in the city of Norwalk as I'm driving around and truly think how proud I am to be the mayor of the city of Norwalk. Our community comes together day in and day out through our school districts, through our team here at City Hall, through our residents, through our chamber, our first responders, through everyone. And it is a proud moment to stand here and represent all of you. So on behalf of my colleagues at the City Council, our other elected officials in the room, it truly is an honor to represent all of you. I'd like to thank the team for helping put this together to be an informative program. I'd like to thank my parents for joining us today. And I'd like to thank my husband, Mike, because if it wasn't for him, I couldn't be Mayor Press. Norwalk truly is a community that looks out for one another. So let's continue that into the holiday season. Share with an individual that's in need. Give to a kid and make them smile during the holidays. And most of all, be safe, make a memory with your family members, and just know, here in the city of Norwalk, we are here for you always. Thank you again for coming, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you.